Now, dear students, you are familiar that any equation which is of the form ax plus by plus c equal to zero, where a b are not zero, is called as the general linear equation or general equation of a line. Now, let us see the different forms of line which we have studied in the previous chapter and how we can convert one form to another. So, different forms of this line ax plus by plus c equal to zero, right? So, first was your slope intercept form. Now, how to change this ax plus by plus c equal to zero to a slope intercept form? So, for writing it in slope intercept form, what will we do? We will express it in the form of y is equal to mx plus c. Okay. So, like you take by is equal to minus ax minus c, right? And in that way, this equation will be converted to y is equal to minus a upon b times x minus c upon b times okay and then the m here by comparison we obtain with this equation is the slope minus a upon b and c is equal to minus c upon b is the required intercept the y intercept which intercept is this this is your y intercept right now if b is 0 then x is equal to minus c upon b if b becomes 0 then your x becomes your minus c upon e, which is a vertical line whose slope is undefined and x intercept is minus c upon e. Now, how to convert it to intercept form? Like if ax plus by plus c equal to 0, but the condition is that c should not be equal to 0. Now, this equation here, we need to express this constant, take the constant to other side, right? And keep this constant as positive and we want to keep it as 1, right? So, to get your x and y intercept, I should express this equation as x upon e plus y upon b is equal to 1. So, I'll write x as, I'll divide by this constant also, minus c upon e plus y upon minus c upon b is equal to 1. So, this value of a and b will give you the respective x and y intercept. How to express the general equation in the form of your normal form, right? The normal form is like x cos omega plus y sin omega equal to p is the normal form of line represented by the equation ax plus by plus c is equal to 0, right? So, uh, what we are going to do is that we will calculate our, this a, it is expressed in the form of a upon cos omega equal to b upon sin omega is equal to minus c upon p. So, cos omega here is minus a p upon c and sin omega here is minus b p upon c. Right? So, squaring and adding this sin square omega plus cos square omega will give you the result as 1. Right? From here, p square is your c square upon a square plus b square and p will become plus minus c upon root a square plus b square. So, cos omega it becomes your plus minus times a upon root a square plus b square and sin omega becomes plus minus b upon under root a square plus b square. So, the normal form of equation of line is a x cos omega plus y sin omega equal to p where cos omega is given by plus minus a upon root a square plus b square and sin omega is plus minus b upon root a square plus b square and p is plus minus c upon root a square plus b square. Now we should keep in mind that we should make the proper choice of the signs so that my p the perpendicular distance is always positive. So let us take an example. Reduce root 3x plus y minus 8 equal to 0 into normal form and find the values of then p and omega. So, this is the given equation. How to reduce it to normal form? You will uh, divide this equation number 1 both sides by square root of square of coefficient of x that is root 3 whole square and the coefficient of y here is 1. So, that becomes as 2. So, you will divide both sides of this equation uh, taking this h to other side. Uh, you need to keep this perpendicular distance p positive. If otherwise negative sign is there, adjust it to the, with the values of x and y. But keep this side, uh, sign of this perpendicular distance side positive. So, if you divide this equation by 2, you will get root 3 by 2x plus half y equal to 4. Right? Now, I will compare this equation, root 3 by 2x plus half of y is equal to 4 with x cos omega plus y sin omega equal to p. Now clearly p here is 4 right? and I get cos omega as root 3 by 2 and sin omega as 1 by 2. So there is one angle which gives you cos omega as root 3 by 2 and sin omega as 
half. So you know sine omega is half at sine 30 degree, and here also cos omega is 2 3 by 2 at cos 30. So we will get one angle from both these equations, and that omega is having angle as 30 degree. Now let us start solving our exercise 10.3. So the very first question is reduce the following equations into slope intercept form and find their slopes and the y intercepts. Okay. So there are three questions in which you have to express all the questions in the form of slope intercept form is y is equal to mx plus c. So you have to express all of them into the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So I'll take question number two. This is 6x plus 3y minus 5 equal to 0. So writing it in this form, you will write it as minus 6x plus 5. Now make uh, y free from any coefficient. So this is minus 2x plus 5 by 3. Now I will compare with the slope intercept form. y is equal to mx plus c. So m here is minus 2. And your y intercept, what we call as c, that is equal to 5 upon 3. Okay, so see one more question that is y is equal to 0. Now what will we, will we do uh, here? You can write it as y is equal to 0, x plus 0, c, right? So compare it with mx plus c. So what will I get? I will get m as 0 and c also as 0. Similarly, question number 1 can be. Now the next question is you have to reduce all of these equations into the intercept form on the axis. So we know that your intercept form is x upon a plus y upon b is equal to 1. So your first question we are taking here. This is given as 3x plus 2y minus 12 equal to 0. So to reduce to the intercept form there is a format which you need to follow. First thing is take the constant to other side. Okay. So the constant here is 12 taken to other side. Right. Now make sure that it is positive always. If it is say it is 12, if it is not 12, then you have to make it positive. Okay. We will check it in question number 3. Now divide by this constant. We have to make this right hand side uh, constant term as 1. So divide by 12 both sides. So what will I get? I will get 3x upon 12 plus 2y upon 12 is equal to 1. This thing implies x upon 4 plus y upon 6 is equal to now compare with x upon e plus y upon b is equal to 1. I get a as 4 and b as 6. Okay. So the a is your x intercept that is equal to 4 and y intercept is 6. Okay. Now let us check it in one more question. 3y plus 2 equal to 0. Now you can see that this equation is not having any x. So I will write it as 3y plus 0x okay, is equal to minus 2. Now I told you that the coefficient or the constant term should always be made positive. So I'll adjust the negative sign here, right? Minus 3y is equal to 2. Okay? Divide by 2 both sides. Why? Because I have to make the constant 1. So it becomes by 2 minus 3y upon 2 is equal to 1. Okay? So you can clearly see from here that uh, how we are going to uh, express this as, okay? Uh, means how to express it in your uh, form of x upon a plus y upon b equal to 1. Okay. Right. Now you will find that a here is means uh, as this, this term is uh, already vanished. So here uh, a, a will be 0 here. Okay. You will be having this term as uh, 0 here. Okay. So this equation you are just going to get it as right. I will take this negative sign to the denominator itself. So it will be your y upon okay, minus 2 upon 3. That is equal to 
1. Right? So when you will compare it with the equation, your uh, x upon a plus y upon b is equal to 1. So this a is 0. Okay? And your b is minus 2 upon 3. Okay? So that means it has no intercept on x-axis. And this is the y-intercept. Now let us check how to reduce equation to normal form. So question number one here is given form is your x minus root 3 by plus 8 equal to 0. Right? So firstly I will express it as minus 8. Right? So firstly I need to make this negative sign positive. So multiply both sides by minus 1. So it becomes like this. Now divide both sides by under root of square of x square of y. So which turns out to be 1 plus 3 that is 2. So dividing this equation number 2 by 2 what we will get a minus x by 2 plus root 3 by 2 y is equal to 8 by 2 is 4. Now compare it with normal form x cos omega plus y sin omega is equal to p. So p here clearly is 4 because it is positive. Okay. Cos omega is minus 1 by 2. Sin omega is root 3 by 2. Now dear students observe here one thing that cos is negative and sin is positive. Okay. So cos is negative and sin is positive means the angle is in second quadrant. Okay, so in first quadrant, your omega is the theta itself. In second quadrant, it is your pi minus theta. Omega is pi minus theta. Okay, in third quadrant, it is pi plus theta. And fourth quadrant, it is taken as minus theta. Okay, so theta means the angle at which your sign is root 3 by 2. Don't take this negative sign. This negative sign just tells me in which quadrant it is. Okay, so cos is half and sin is root 3 by 2 at cos th cos is half and sin is root 3 by 2 at theta, the angle as 60 degree. Okay, but in second quadrant, my omega will be your pi minus theta. So pi is 180 minus 60, that is 120. So the normal form will be your x cos 120 degree plus y sin 120 degree is equal to 4. P here is 4. Okay. So let us check it out with question number 2. y minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. So again write it as y is equal to 2. So this is 0x plus y. Okay. For comfort let us write like this. Now divide both sides by we will divide by coefficient of x whole square plus coefficient of y whole square so that is 1 itself it becomes your 0x upon 1 plus y upon 1 is equal to 2 upon 1 ok so compare it with x cos omega plus y sin omega is equal to p so p here is clear is it is positive also cos omega is 0 and sine omega is 1. Now dear students, both cos and sine are positive means it is the case of first quadrant. Okay? Right? And in first quadrant, you know at what angle cos is 0 and sine is 1. That angle is 90 degree. Okay? So the normal form is x cos 90 plus y sine 90 is equal to your p here is so this is the required normal form now the next question is find the distance of the point from the line 12 times x plus 6 is equal to 5 times y minus 2 okay so there is a formula that perpendicular distance 
of a point right say some line is there which is your this line and we need to find out the perpendicular distance okay this distance perpendicular distance from this point say minus 1 so the formula for finding this perpendicular distance is distance of a point uh, your x1 y1 from the line the line should be in the form of ax plus by plus c equal to 0 okay plus c equal to 0 is given by mod of ax1 plus by1 plus c upon root a square plus b square so firstly i need to uh, bring this equation to standard form so it becomes 12x plus 72 is equal to 5 by minus 10 so this becomes 12x minus 5 by plus 82 equal to 0 so i need to compare it with ax plus by plus c equal to 0 to get the values of a as 12 b as minus 5 and c as 82 and my this point is acting as x1 by so let us apply the formula of perpendicular distance this is a x1 plus b y1 plus c upon root a square here is 12 square is 144 and b square is 12 minus 12 minus 5 plus 82 13 upon 13 and you get 5 units in next question find the points on x axis whose distance from the line is 4 units okay so we know that a point on x axis is like having its y coordinate 0 so let it is of the form of x e right and the line here is x upon 3 plus y upon 4 that is equal to 1 let us write it in standard form so by taking lcm when x plus 3y equal to 12 for applying the perpendicular distance formula the equation should be expressed in the form of your ax plus by plus c equal to 0 okay so a here is 4 b here is 3 and c here is minus 12 this is your x1 y1 okay now we know that the perpendicular distance of point x1 y1 from the line ax plus by plus c equal to 0 this is given by ax1 plus by1 plus c upon root a square plus b square and here in this question it is given that this perpendicular distance is equal to 4 So this thing implies 4 into x, okay, plus 3 into 0, minus 12 upon 16 plus 9. This is equal to 4. This thing implies 4x minus 12 upon this is 25 and this is 5 is equal to 4. Okay. Now, as it is expressed in your magnitude, so I have to consider two equations from here. Okay, 4x minus 12 upon 5 can be equal to plus 4, or 4x minus 12 upon 5 can be equal to minus 4. So let us solve both of them. Is equal to 20. 4x is equal to 32. X is equal to 8. So either my point is 80, and here 4x minus 12 is equal to minus 20. 4x is equal to minus 20 plus 12. That is equal to minus 8. X is equal to Minus two, or my point is minus two zero, so eight zero, or minus. Question number six is find the distance between parallel lines. Okay, so what is how can you identify that the both these lines are parallel? See, the parallel lines are of the form. Okay, that we know that the perpendicular distance. between parallel lines ax okay plus dy plus c1 
equal to 0 and ax plus by plus c2 equal to 0. So you can identify the parallel lines from here but you will find that the coefficient of x is same, y is same, just the difference is in constants. So constant are taken as c1 and c2. Okay. So there is just this difference how you will identify that the both lines are parallel. And here the perpendicular distance formula is your mod of c1 minus c2 upon under root of a square plus b square. Okay. So mod is just in the numerator as there is no negative things coming out of this square okay, in case of real number system. Right. So let us apply this formula. Identify from here. I will take this second portion. So my equation is Lx plus Ly plus P equal to 0. This is your Lx plus Ly minus R equal to 0. So clearly you can identify that both these lines are parallel. Okay. So if you will compare both these lines with Ax plus Dy plus C1 equal to 0 and Ax plus Dy plus C2 equal to 0. So clearly you can see C1 is your B and C2 is minus R. Okay. So let us apply the formula. So this is your C1 minus C2 upon root A square plus B square. So this becomes your P plus R upon under root of a square, a square is your L square plus your L square. Okay, so this becomes your P plus R and this becomes your root 2 L square. Okay, or I can write it as 1 by root 2 times P plus R upon L. Now, next question number 7 is find the equation of line parallel to the line 3x minus 4y plus 2 equal to 0 and passing through the point. Okay. Now, you know that if an equation is parallel to this line, it will have same slope as that of this line. Okay. So, let us find that slope of line 3x minus 4y plus 2 equal to 0 can be easily found as by expressing it in the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So if I take 4 by 2 other side, it will be your 3x plus 2 and this will be your y is equal to 3 by 4x plus 2 by 4. So that is plus half. Right? So this is your y is equal to I will compare with y is equal to mx plus c. So my slope here is 3 by 4. Right? Now since a required line is parallel to this my line 1. Okay. So that means slope of a required line is also 3 by 4. Okay. Also the line Equation of line passing through a point x1 by 1 and having slope m can be given by your point slope form that is y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. Right? So this is my point x1, y1. So let us apply it y minus 3 is equal to m times x plus 2. This is 4y minus 12 is equal to 3x plus 6. This implies 3x minus 4y and this becomes minus 12 and minus 6. That is 3x minus 4y and this becomes plus 18 equal to 0. Question number it says find the equation of line perpendicular to the line and having x intercept as 3. So we are familiar with what is the connection between slopes of perpendicular lines and the product of their slopes is minus 1. So let slope of my required line is m1 and slope of your line x minus 7y plus 5 equal to 0 is m2. Okay. 
this is my equation number one. So let's let us express it in the form y equal to mx plus c. So clearly I can see what is the slope. I will compare with y is equal to mx plus c. So my slope here is 1 by 7. Now since lines are perpendicular, so I know that product of m1 into m2 is minus 1. So clearly from here m1 will be minus 1 upon m2, negative reciprocal. So it is slope here is <coughs> minus 1 upon 1 by 7 and that is your minus 7. Okay. Now x intercept is 3. So that means I should take y0. So given that line passes through point 30 and having slope ms minus 7. Okay. So this is x1, y1. So using point slope form, what is point slope form? y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. So y minus 0 is equal to minus 7 times x minus 3. This thing implies y is equal to minus 7x plus 21. 7x plus y minus 21 equal to 0 is the desired equation. Question number 9 says find the angle between the lines. These are the two lines given. Okay. So we know the formula that angle between lines having slope m1 and m2 is given by tan theta is equal to m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2. Okay. So firstly I'll check the slopes. So root 3x plus y is equal to 1, y is equal to 1 minus root 3x. So if I compare it with y is equal to mx plus c, so clearly uh, my m1 is minus root 3. And here root 3y is equal to 1 minus x, y is 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3x. So I will compare it with y is equal to m2x plus c, so the term with x is my slope. So I am having these values of m1 and m2 as minus root 3 and minus 1 by root 3. So let us put it here. tan theta is m1 minus m2. So minus minus will be plus upon 1 plus m1 into m2 will give me the negative uh, this positive sign root 3 into 1 by root 3. So I will get it as this is your minus 3 plus 1 upon root 3 and here it is 1 plus 1 that is 2. So that is minus 2 upon 2 root 3 and I will get it as 1 upon root 3. Okay. This is 1 upon root 3. Okay. <clears throat> now I always told you that uh, you can have if two lines are making an angle if one is acute the other one will be obtuse. Okay. So if you get theta, the obtuse one can be calculated by 180 minus theta, right? So if tan theta is, I take the positive value as 1 by root 3, you know the angle is 30 degree, right? So the acute angle is 30 degree. And what will be the obtuse angle? Obtuse angle will be 180 minus 30, that is 100. says the line through points H3 and 4, 1 intersect the line through. This your line is say this is the line minus 9 by minus 19 equal to 0. A line through do these two points intersected at right angle means say this is a point H3 and this is say point your 4. So automatically this line AB is perpendicular to this given line CD. And we know the connection between the perpendicular lines and the product of their slopes is minus 1. You have to find the value of h. So we will work it out. So firstly, we know that if AB is perpendicular to CD, that means that the product of their slopes 
is minus one. So let us find the slope of my line AB. So AB, I am given two points, so I'll use this difference of ordinates upon difference of epsilon. So ordinates means it is one minus three, one four minus h. Okay. So say the slope is m. And m2 is your slope of your line C, which is minus equation number one. And to get this, I will express it in the form of y is equal to m x plus c. Y is equal to 7x upon 9 minus 19 upon 9. So I will compare it with y is equal to m x plus c to get my m as 7 upon 9. Okay, so this my C I have denoted it with M2, so I'll take it as M2. Okay, now according to question, since the lines are intersecting at right angles, and one into M2 is minus one, so that is one minus three upon four minus h into seven upon nine is equal to minus one. So that means your this is uh, minus two upon four minus h. Into seven upon nine is minus one. So this negative sign can be adjusted. Fourteen is equal to nine four is thirty six minus nine h. So nine h is equal to thirty six minus fourteen. So this becomes your six minus four is two and three minus one is two. So h here is twenty two by nine. Next question is prove that the line through this point and parallel to this line is given by this. Okay. Now a line is parallel to this line that that, that means it has equal slope. So since a required line is parallel to ax plus by plus c to zero, so it has same slope. As one, this equation. So let us express it in the form minus e x minus c. E. So y is equal to minus a upon b times x minus c upon b. So slope here is minus a upon b. Now you know that the equation of line passing through your x one y one and having slope. M is equal to minus a upon b using which form? Point slope form. Y minus y one equal to m times x minus x. Y minus y one is your y one here, okay? And because x one and y one both will be x and y one, this is minus a upon b. This is b times y minus y one minus a times x minus x. One. Bring it to this side. A times x minus x one plus b times y minus y one equal to zero, which is the desired equation. Question number twelve says that two lines passing through the point two three intersect each other at an angle of sixty degree. If the slope of one line is two, find the equation of other line. Okay, so you are given the slope of, of one line, and the both the lines they pass through point two three, and you have to find the equation of other line. Now here you cannot find the slope because the, this inclination is given like that two lines they are inclined at an angle of sixty degree. This is the angle between two lines. So here I can apply that formula tan theta in terms of slopes. So here slope of one line. M1 is say two, and let M2 is slope of required line. Okay. Now given that we know that angle between two lines in terms of slope is given by the formula tan theta is equal to mod of M1 minus M2 upon one plus M1 M2. So here the angle at which they are inclined is 60 degree, so it becomes 2 minus m2 upon 1 plus 2m2. 
tan 60 is under root 3 and this is 2 minus m2 1 1 plus 2 m2 so in order to open the mod I have to I can use 2 minus m2 I will get two equations in which firstly it is equated to say plus root 3 and secondly it is equated to minus root 3. So let us find out the value of m2 because m2 is the slope of required line which I need to make the equation of line by using point slope form because one point is given to me. So 2 minus m2 is equal to root 3 plus 2 root 3 m2. So this is 2 minus root 3 is 2 root 3 plus 1 will come from this times m2. So m2 is 2 minus root 3 upon 2 root 3 plus here 2 minus m2 minus root 3 minus 2 root 3 m2. So it becomes your 2 root 3 m2 minus m2 is equal to minus root 3 minus 2. So m2 is 2 root 3 minus 1 is minus times root 3 plus 2. Now what can I do is to adjust this negative sign I can simply exchange the terms 1 minus 2 root 3. So I will get m2 as this. I will frame the equation of line. Equation of line you are passing through point 2 3 and having slope m2 as say the first condition 2 minus root 3 upon 2 root 3 plus 1 which is your y minus 5 1 equal to m times x minus x so this is y minus 3 is equal to this into x minus x1 is 2 so let us cross multiply minus 3 into 2 root 3 plus 1 is equal to 2 minus root 3 times x minus 2 times 2 minus root 3. Okay. Now bring y to the side of x. So this is minus 2 root 3 plus 1 times y. Okay. And minus say this is open the brackets 4 plus 2 root 3. Bring that term to that side. So it is so it is your minus 6 root 3 so that side will become plus 6 root 3 and this is minus 3 it will become plus 3. Okay. So the constant term I am adjusting is um, it turns out to be your the constant term will be your minus 1 plus 8 root 3 if you can clearly give. Right. So you can take everything to your uh, left hand side. Right. So the term of x will be a negative but to make it positive I will flip uh, it as instead of 2 minus root 3 x I will flip it as root 3 minus 2 times this is x plus 2 times root 3 plus 1 times y and minus 6 root 3 everything taken towards the left hand side. Okay. So this I will get root 3 minus 2 times x plus 2 root 3 plus 1 times y this is your minus 8 root 3 plus 1 equal to 0. So this thing implies root 3 minus 2 times x plus 2 root 3 plus 1 times y. This is equal to minus 1 plus 8 root 3. Okay. And now the second case in which the point was 2, 3 through which the line was passing and m2 is your 2 plus root 3 upon 1 minus 2 root 3. So in this form y minus y1 equal to m2 times x minus x. So this is 1 minus 2 root 3 times y minus 3 times 1 minus 2 root 3 is equal to plus root 3 times x minus 2 into 2 plus root 3. So again I can what can I can do is I can to make this x positive, let's take it everything to other side. Right? So this will be, uh, this y will come to that side. So minus 1 minus 2 root 3 y. Okay? And minus uh, 2 goes of 4. Okay? And minus
minus 2 root 3. This will come as plus 3. And this is plus 6 root 3 will come as minus 6 root 3 equal to 0. So again you can adjust this negative sign by flipping 2 root 3 minus 1 times y. And this is minus 1 and minus 8 root 3 equal to 0. So this is 2 plus root 3x plus 2 root 3 minus 1 times y. And take negative sign common and take everything to other side. This is the result, desired equation. Question number 13 is find the equation of right bisector of line segment joining the points 3, 4 and minus 1. So suppose a line is there which is your of the points 3, 4 and this is minus 1. So right bisector means this is this equation of say CD. CD is the right bisector. Right bisector is that which means bisects this line AB means D is the midpoint also and is perpendicular to this AB also. Right? So since CD is a right bisector of AB. This thing implies CD is perpendicular to AB and D is midpoint. That's why it is bisector. So using midpoint formula, midpoint of AB, this is x1 plus x2 upon 2, y1 plus y2 upon 2. 3 minus 1 upon 2, 4 plus 2 upon 2, this is 1, this is 3. Right? So the point is 1, 3. Now, I got one point, so by if I get the slope of CD, I can use point slope form to find the equation. Now, since CD is perpendicular to AB, so slope of CD into slope of AB is equal to minus 1. So slope of AB is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. This is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So this is minus 2 upon minus. So this is 1 by 2. Right? Slope of AB. Right? Now what will be the slope of CD? Slope of CD will be negative reciprocal. You can use this condition slope of A. So negative reciprocal means the slope is minus 2. So equation of CD using y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1 is y minus passing through point is this because it is passing through the point uh, 1, 3. Okay? So y minus 3 is minus 2 times x minus dot x1 is 1. So I get y minus 3 is minus 2x plus 2. So 2x plus y minus 3 minus 2 is equal to 0. So 2x plus y minus 5 equal to 0 is the desired equation. Question number 14 says find the coordinates of foot top perpendicular from the point minus 1, 3 to the line 3x minus 4y minus 16 equal to 0. So this is the line. AB 3x minus 4y minus 16 equal to 0 and the line CD is perpendicular. Okay. This point is CD. So CD is perpendicular to AB. The cut one condition we can see is that the product of the slopes is minus 1. Right? So the best way to solve this question is that you find the equation of CD and then Take the point of intersection of CD and AB. Now what is the slope of AB first? Express it in this form. So y is 16 by 4. So compare it with y is equal to mx plus c. My slope is 3 by 4. Now since CD is perpendicular to AB, this thing implies slope of CD is equal to minus 1 upon slope of AB. So it will be minus 1 upon 3 by 4 that is 
minus half the back. Now the equation of CD will be using y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. The slope here is this and point here is this. This is y minus 3 is m times x minus x1. So 3y minus 9 is equal to minus 4x minus 4, 4x plus 3y minus 9 plus 4 means minus 5 equal to 0. Right? So I need to calculate the point of intersection of now point of intersection of 1 and 2. For that I multiply this equation by 4, this by 3, equal to the coefficient. So this is 12x 16y minus 64 equal to 0 and this is 12x plus 9y minus 15 equal to 0. So let us do the subtraction minus 25y. So this is minus your 49 equal to 0. So 25y is equal to 49. So y is minus 49 by 25. Okay. Now put in 1. So 1 will imply 3x minus 4 minus 16 equal to 0. 3x plus your 196 upon 25 minus 16 equal to 0. So 3x is equal to 16 minus 196 upon 25. So 3x is equal to 16 into 25 400 minus 196 upon 25. So what is 400 upon 196? Right? This is 204. So x is equal to 204 upon 25 into 3. So 3, 6, 18 and 3 is a 24. So x is equal to 68 by 25. So the coordinates of point D are 68 by 25 and 49 by 25. Next question is the perpendicular from origin to the line y equal to mx plus c meets it at the point minus 1 to find the values of m and c. The perpendicular from origin to the line meets it at the point. Right? So there is a line y is equal to mx plus c. There is a perpendicular from c origin. This is the point c origin to this line meets it at the point minus 1 to okay? find the values of m and c. So again, this is your say AB, this is your CD. Okay. So since CD is perpendicular to AB, that means the product of the slopes is minus 1. So slope of y is equal to mx plus c is c clearly m and slope of line joining CD using y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 is 2 minus 0 upon minus 1 minus 0. So this is minus 2. So what is the slope of CD into slope of AB? This is minus 1. So CD is having slope uh, M and uh, CD is having slope minus 2 and slope of AB is and this is minus 1. This thing implies M is equal to 1 by 2. Okay. Now I need to get the value of C. Right? Now, the line y is equal to mx plus c. Uh, m I already got that it becomes your half x plus c. Right? Now, since you can see that a, b, a point, this this d point lies on a, b. Right? So, d point that is your minus 1, 2, it actually satisfies because it is lying. So, this satisfies equation number 1. So, what does that mean? Satisfies means by replacing x and y you can get the value of c. So 2, so this is plus half is equal to c. This thing implies c is 4 plus 1 by 2 which is 5 by 2. Question number 16 says if p and q are the lengths of perpendicular from the origin to the lines, this is the first line, this is the second line, respectively prove that p square plus 4q square is equal to k square. Okay, you can see k here. Now, 
length of perpendicular or perpendicular distance right same thing so we know perpendicular distance from the point x1 y1 to the line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 is given by d is equal to ax1 plus by1 plus c upon under root a square plus b square okay so here we see that p is perpendicular distance from this point origin to the line x cos theta minus y sin theta minus k cos 2 theta because I need to equal to 0 because I need to write it in this form. So this p will be equal to your a here is cos theta into 0 minus sin theta into 0 and it will be your minus k cos 2 theta this divided by cos square theta plus sin square theta. So this becomes your k cos 2 theta upon this is 1 and rest of the terms are 0. Okay. Similarly, Q is the perpendicular distance from 0, 0 to the line x secant theta plus y cosecant theta minus k is equal to 0. So, Q is your secant theta into 0 plus cosecant theta into 0 minus k upon under root of secant square theta plus cosecant square theta. So I get it as minus k upon this is 1 upon cos square theta 1 upon sin square theta minus k upon this is sin square theta plus cos square theta upon sin square theta cos square theta minus k and this is your this, this will become 1 and this will go to the numerator. So I can directly write it as out of the root as sin theta cos theta. Now for simplification purpose, we can use a little bit of trigonometry here. And we will multiply and divide it by 2. Now what happens here? That the formula of sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta. Now it will give me the benefit because here I am having k cos 2 theta. So this becomes minus k upon 2 sin 2 theta mod and it becomes k by 2 sin 2 theta if I take it out. So this is my value of p, this is my value of q. So according to question, p square plus 4 q square. So p square is k square cos square 2 theta plus 4 times your q square is k by 2 sin 2 theta whole square. So this is your k square cos square 2 theta plus 4 by 4 k square sin square 2 theta. I can take k square common. So this is your, what do I get? I get cos square 2 theta plus sin square 2 theta and the answer is k square which is my desired. Question number 17 says find the length of altitude from vertex A. So say this is my triangle and this is A is 2, 3, B is 4 minus 1, C is 1, 2. You have to find the equation on length of altitude, length of altitude from your vertex A. So this is the length of altitude. So how do you find the length of altitude or it is the perpendicular distance? It is you need a point and then you need the equation. So what I need is the equation of line BC. So as two points are visible, I will use simply 2.4 using 2.4. That is y minus y1 is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 into x minus x1. So y minus, this is my y1, y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1, x minus this. So y plus 1 is 3 upon 
minus 3 x minus 4 so this is minus 1 so y plus 1 is minus x plus 4 so x plus y and minus 3 is equal to 0 this is the equation of this line so you know the formula for perpendicular distance from point A coordinate x1 y1 the line of the form a x plus b y plus c equal to 0 is given by a x1 plus b y1 plus c upon root a square plus b square. So this is my x plus y minus 3 equal to 0 and instead of x1 y1 plus 2 3. So let us apply this formula 1 into 2 plus 1 into 3 minus 3 upon under root of a square plus b square. 5 minus 3 upon root 2. So this is your 2 upon root 2, which on a rationalization can be written as a root 2 units. Last question of the exercise is that if P is the length of perpendicular from origin to the line whose intercepts on the axis are AB show that 1 upon P square is equal to 1 upon A square plus 1 upon B square. So you know equation of line which is making intercept on the axis or uh, mean to say that equation of line in intercept form. So it is x upon e plus y upon b is equal to 1. Okay. Now p is length of perpendicular from origin to this line. So this line to apply that perpendicular distance formula I should write it in the form. So you know that perpendicular distance from this point to this line is given by ax1 plus by1 plus c upon root a square plus b square. Okay. So here p instead of d it is p. So x here a, a here is 1 upon a. You can clearly see A is 1 upon A, B is 1 upon B and C is minus 1. So 1 upon A into 0 plus whenever you take uh, perpendicular distance from origin only the constant term survives. Uh, everything else gets deleted. So this is 1 upon A whole square plus 1 upon B whole square. So I get it as say a mod of minus 1 upon uh, root 1 upon A square plus 1 upon B square which can clearly be written as out of the mod like this 1 upon a square plus 1 upon b square. So something I obtained is p is 1 upon root 1 upon a square plus 1 upon b square. So taking the reciprocal it will be 1 upon 1 upon p is equal to this will go to the numerator. Okay. Now I will square both sides. So what will it give me? 1 upon p square. So this root will get removed and this is the desired condition which we require.